hope you've all been tuned. Hope you're all today. Hope you're playing Grand in your world. Welcome to another QA Wednesday. Okay, okay, so first question today is uh, I have a small Lion 6 Spider amp and a Boss SD1, and I want to expand. So, should I buy a bigger amp or buy some more pedals first? Um, I would say go for a uh, a bigger, well, a bigger and a little bit better amp. I mean, there's there's nothing wrong with the Line Six Spiders, but they're not the best. They are, there's nothing wrong with them. So you can make them sound really cool, but like they're not the best. They can be a bit um, brittle sounding. I think I think that's the word. I don't, know. I don't know. I really loved the one I had for a while, but it was a bit kind of. Um, they sounded really cool, but they are a bit kind of uh, brittle to the sounds, I'd say. So I would definitely recommend maybe getting like a a, a bigger kind of wide amp. Um, he said you're interested in like Vox AC30. I wouldn't really recommend an AC30, um, especially not the valve version. They can be a bit temperamental. So uh, if you get, if you want an AC30, I would probably may maybe go for the valve reactor series uh, that, I, that I demoed a while back because they are absolutely awesome, and I want one of them. They're so cool. So uh, I would if you want if you want to go down that Vox route, the valve reactor series, the AC15 or the AC30 would definitely be kind of the way to go, so to say. And then once you've got that amp, uh, I would then maybe you'd start looking into kind of like, you know, kind of what getting uh, more and more pedals and, and kind of like knowing what you want because the amp you buy might do what you want without having to buy a pedal, if that makes any sense. I don't know, hope that makes sense. But yeah, I would definitely go for a bigger amp uh, than your Line 6. Uh, like I say, if you want to go down the AC30 route, go for the, like, something like the Valve Reactor, definitely. Uh, really, really awesome amps, free channels, you can't go wrong. You really can't. Um, and it's definitely one of those pedals where you don't. Uh, definitely one of those amps. Sorry, but you don't need pedals for. It's definitely one of those pedals you don't need an amp for. Hmm, that's an interesting statement. Anyway, yeah. Uh, I hope that's answered your question. I'll definitely go for uh, an amp first and buy pedals later on. So, uh, I hope that's answered your question. Moving on to question two now. Okay, okay. So, question two is: Are there any exercises I do regularly to improve as a player? And are there any tips? In, uh, do I have any tips on improving vibrato? Um, exercises I do regularly to improve as a player. Uh, I don't know. Um, that's male. We have male. Um, I thought it was Len for a second. He was positioned just off camera. But yeah. Anyway, back to the question. Not Len or the mailman. Anyway, uh, any exercises that they regularly as a player to get better? Uh, it's just simply a case of just playing. If that makes sense, I know that sounds really weird and stupid and it's not really an answer, but what one thing that I feel like makes me better as a player is playing along to CDs and playing along to music and learning songs. Um, this might not work for everyone, but it, it's what works for me. It's kind of literally learning solos and, and songs and and um and putting kind of the theoretical knowledge i have into a practical use I mean, I've, I've spoke about this tons so i feel like a bit of a broken old record right now but um I, I would highly recommend like literally just kind of like you know learning all your favorite songs and just playing onto them on a daily basis you know even if it's just five minutes and you get only get to play one song i would recommend doing that i feel that improves you as a player because you're playing in more of a practical context instead of kind of like a theoretical one. And again, I spoke about that a million times, so I do apologise if I do sound like a yeah, broken old record. But um, I'm also repeating myself a lot today. Anyway, but yeah, that would be kind of my advice. It would just be to kind of learn, you know, just play along with your favourite songs and just kind of learn all the parts and just keep doing them and doing them and doing them until it's really kind of like second nature and you don't have to think about it. So you can just like literally just kind of just kind of bash out, bash it out, and also when a discipline to learn the whole song, not just kind of like the main riff, and like also a discipline to when you're playing a guitar and you start playing a song, play the whole thing, even if you kind of shorten it down to just like a verse, chorus, solo, you know, and you're missing out, say, second verse and the second chorus on and the outro or whatever. Just do, doing like you know, playing all the key components of the song. I feel that would make you, that should improve you as a player because you, you know you, you're playing you're playing music. You're not playing like a you know you're not just running a scale, so to say. You're not kind of running that kind of theoretical thing. You're actually kind of playing music and 
I feel that, that that's what I did anyway. I, I can only speak from that from like my own experiences really. But yeah, I, I hope that answers your question on that one. Uh, vibrato, improving vibrato is just a thing of it just takes time. Uh, I can't really say anything other than that. Really, I don't. I never really thought about doing it. The bra, it was really weird. I've got some recordings, which I'll show you one day, of when I first started playing guitar. I got lent a, uh, my uncle lent me a four track tape recorder. And uh, when I used to play, like back in back in the day, like uh, two years into playing, I'd do solos and there was no vibrato. And throughout time, you can kind of hear it developing and just kind of like, you know, you eventually kind of get to the point where you have your own kind of thing. So I would say that's just kind of thing, just, keeping at it, sticking at it, and eventually kind of like you'll get your own kind of style, so to say. And it, it's just time. I, I've spoke about this in the, my last q and I think. It's, it's just having that, just giving it that time to kind of like, you know, naturally progress instead of kind of like trying to force it. Because the moment you force things, yeah, it, it, it is not going to happen. So just be patient, you know, and just kind of develop it naturally and kind of like take vibrato just listen to people's vibrato and just kind of try and emulate it, you know, like you know your favorite kind of thing and you know you, 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 it will develop over time really uh, i hope i answered your question anyway uh on that and um how to improve as a player i mean i say I, that that's that's what i do is just play along to music and i just i love doing that it's, there's nothing better than learning a whole song and playing a song it it just makes me happy so yeah, uh, I hope that's answered your question. I'm going to move on to question three now. So question three is what guitars have survived the 62 Strap Fund cull? Uh, not many. Um, I've sold a lot. I've all, uh, not only have I sold a lot of guitars, I've sold quite a few amplifiers and I've sold a lot of pedals as well. Um, so I've got rid of a lot of stuff. I had 38, 38 guitars before I uh, before the 62 strap came up and now I have 12 so I've sold a lot and I will do a video soon um, an update video on like what I've got left guitar collection wise and the guitars I've kept are ones that I just I can't part with because they mean too much the guitars I've sold meant a lot to me but not as much as the ones I've kept the ones I've kept I've been really brutal with with shifting guitars uh, but the ones I've kept are like really important to me. Like for instance, this one, this headphone Les Paul. My mum and dad bought me this uh, in in 2000 and, 2003 or 2004. Would have been 2004. This would have been uh, no, sorry, 2003. Sorry, I, I, yeah, my my parents bought me this in 2003 for my birthday, and it's just one of those guitars that I've had it for that long, and I've done so much with it. And it's such a part of me that I couldn't sell it at all. I just I couldn't part with this. It would, it 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 no one. It's no longer just a guitar. You know, this is no longer just a guitar. It, it's a part of me. You know, it really is. And that's, that might sound really silly and stupid, but you know that that's the way I kind of feel about it. Is when you when you have a kind of a connection with an instrument, a guitar, like or whatever it is, you know, a drum kit or a bass or or a violin or or whatever. That instrument becomes a part of you, not just a piece of wood with strings on it. It, it, it becomes a bit of a an, an extension of your being, so to say. So to kind of like to lose something like that, and or to sell something off like that, it, it's it shouldn't re you shouldn't really have to do it. You know, no matter how much kind of like you know you, you feel you maybe you should or whatnot, I feel you shouldn't if it has a lot of you know attachment to you. So guitars like this. I couldn't sell for all, you know, I just couldn't do it for all the money in the world. I just couldn't get rid of a guitar like this because it's because of who bought me it and why it was bought for me and when it was bought for me and and because I've had it for such a long period of time and I've done so much with it. it it's just I can't shift stuff like that. So, yeah, I'll do a, I'll do an update video soon on my guitar collection uh, and show you what I have left and I'll I'll give, I'll give a little bit of explanation on each guitar why I've kept it. I have been very brutal though. And you also asked uh, why I'm always wearing long sleeved long sleeves and hoodies. That's a bit more of a deep question. Uh, well, deep answer actually. Um, the question is pretty, you know, uh, that's a pretty straightforward question you've asked. But the, the answer to that is, is quite a difficult one to explain without kind of getting a bit misty eyed, so to say. Um, 
It's not, to, you asked if it was to call up dodgy tattoos. It's not to call, uh, to call up dodgy tattoos, no, no. I mean, people have been asking about my tattoo on my arm. And um, I'll do a video on that at some point as well, explaining who that is and, and, and why he means a lot to me. But um, I'll do a video on why I wear long sleeves and hoodies all the time uh, another time. But it's not really uh, apt right now. Uh, it's not really, it's not really the time or the place for it. So, uh, but yeah, I hope that's answered your question on the, uh, the well, what guitar survived the sixty-two strap call anyway. Because uh, yeah, a lot have gone, a lot of pedals have gone, and a lot of amps have gone. So, yes. Um, moving on to question four. Okay, okay. So question four. Uh, get a bit of paper. Come here. Uh, I have a Marshall Valve State eighty eighty eight oh eight oh. I haven't used it for many years, and it's sounding a bit unwell. Uh, I know people dislike this model of amp, but do you think it's worth getting it repaired? And will it achieve something close to John Frusciante's sound? Yes, uh, to both. It's definitely worth getting it repaired, as the eight the eight o eight o are a brilliant amp. The, a lot the valve states do get um, a bad rap. You're definitely right there. They, they kind of um, kind of on par with like you know the the old MG HD effects amps and uh, and and some other of those kind of like you no. Know, solid state or hybrid amps like the AVTs and, and stuff like that but they're brilliant amps they're, they're, they really are brilliant amps um, and the, the valve state I used to own a valve state VS100 head and I had to sell that and I regret it to this day selling that because it was absolutely brilliant it really was an awesome amp and I miss it because yeah, it was so good it was such a great amp but um, yeah, I would definitely recommend getting that fixed. Um, it might just be the preamp valve inside that uh, needs replacing. If so, that's 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 an easy fix. Yeah, that's, that's not a hard thing to do at all. You just take your one out, shove the one in, and hey, you're away again. Um, but I would get it checked over by a, like um, like a tech or something just to get to make sure it's running okay and it's not gonna like you know blow up the world or your house. Um, but uh, yeah, as far as it achieving John Fashanti sound, yeah, you can easily get a John Fashanti kind of sound out of it, no problem at all. Especially if you're using like the, the the distortion, run really low, just to kind of like get that kind of crunchy kind of clean sound. The the valves they do that really well, just you know like, like the MGs do and, and and like you know any of those any AVTs, um, they do that kind of thing really really well. So yeah, I would really recommend getting that fixed and, and getting it up and running because it, it, they're brilliant amps, absolutely brilliant amps. And yeah, can't recommend that enough. I uh, hope that's answered your question. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna move on to question five now. Okay, so question five is the last question in this Q and A today. Uh, is how loud is I can't. Sorry, I forgot, I forgot how to read all of a sudden. <laughs> Anyway, question five, moving along. Uh, how loud is the CR120 on its lowest setting? I'm off to uni and need an amp that will work at bedroom and also live. And you've asked, can I play the amp on low volume but place the camera outside the room so you get an idea of how loud it is on its lowest setting? Yes, I can. Um, one thing I will say is the CR120 goes whisper quiet. And uh, you, you said you've seen the video on that. I, I, I do understand, like, you know, outside of a room, like, you know, that, that kind of thing. So I think this is a really cool thing. And we'll, we'll go upstairs and we'll do that in a minute. But um, another amp I would recommend if you don't want to have, like, a head and a cab, because uh, you'll need, like, a 212 cab, because if you have a 112 and you're gigging, you're going to need a 100 watt speaker in, in the cab, and that's going to make it really, really heavy. So um, another amp I'd recommend if you wanted a bedroom amp that's not too loud and you can gig with would be like a PV Bandit, like preferably like the Red Stripe because they're brilliant and they go super, super quiet. Or say the Orange CR60, which is another great amp, you know, which goes super, super quiet and is giggable, easy giggable. And there's also the Marshall um, DFX100. Uh, it's a single speaker, uh, combo they're absolutely brilliant as well so any of those three would do the job as well just in case you kind of want a bit more of a compact compact kind of package instead of having a head in the cab but the cl120 will do it as well if you have a 2x12 cab and the cl120 you'll you'll get down to like whisper volumes it's really really quiet it's very 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 neighbor friendly so uh so yeah let's um how we can do it i'll tell you what i'll do i'll play a bit with the camera in the room upstairs and then i'll move the camera outside and i'll play a bit more and uh let you hear it you probably won't hear anything it might just be dead silence for like uh, a couple of seconds but uh yeah but hopefully you'll get get an idea of uh, how quiet it is 
So uh, yeah, so let's uh, go do that, shall we? Okay, dokie doodahs, let's do the volume test. So, uh, at this point in time, I'm in the dirty channel. I've got the volume at two, which is uh, loud. Yeah, you can't hear me talk over. So, no, that's fairly loudish. Uh, I wouldn't say that's gig volume, definitely not. It's kind of like a loud, kind of uh, house kind of noise. But, so that's kind of the sound I've got. But if I lower the volume to just below one, actually, where's the breakthrough? Yeah, so the breakthrough volume is literally just below one, so it's like, you know, if, that, if that's the line for one, that's kind of like breakthrough. You kind of almost hear my guitar unplugged over the top, and I can easily talk over the top of that. So now I'm going to move the camera out there in one take and let you hear it with the door closed. And I'm not going to shut the door all the way, just so you can hear it. So come with me. Moving out, moving out, moving out. Sorry about that, bit of a rough ride. So, yeah. See you in a sec. Here we go. I don't know if you could hear that, but I was just playing. So hopefully that answers your uh, question. It goes very, very, very quiet. Let me bring you back in to the light. Da, 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 da. Yeah, so that's the quietest the CL120 will go. I say just below one is kind of like that breakthrough volume where it still sounds really fat. Um, and I say you can hear that in the video I did on it, uh, but it's super super quiet and there's no way you're going to bother anyone with that that kind of volume so about let's say just below one and one is like a good kind of bedroom volume two is like a loud room volume um when i gig the cl 20 i normally gig it about five or six or four well four five or six depending on the venue if it's kind of a small venue it's on four if it's massive and because i don't mic it up i run it on six i've never I've only ever got it above six once, and that was only, you know, that was literally because I was playing against two drum kits and I had to have it on seven, and it just towered above these two drum kits. You know, so anybody who says the CL120 is not loud enough to gig, I don't know what's going on there, but that's very, very wrong. But anyway, uh, yeah, so it does go super quiet. I hope that's answered your question. I hope you enjoyed this uh, QA. Uh, I do apologise about the extremely rough getting you out of the room there, and uh, so I apologise for any silence you may have heard, but anyway. Hope that answered your questions uh, well, and I'll see you again for another video very, very soon. Have a great morning, afternoon, good evening. Goodbye now, this feels weird. I don't have a guitar. I feel wrong. Goodbye now. Have a great one.